welcome to Budapest. The building in the background is the Parliament House on the far side of the Danube. And we're looking for a vintage tram today. Road, the HEB, which is a suburban railway, to the end of the line. There are several different routes in Budapest, all independent. The HEV is a very convenient way to visit these Roman ruins. Back in Budapest, and uh, we caught one of the, another one of these HGV lines, the Hev to the end of the line. We didn't get off quick enough, and we're up in the yard now. But um, there are some interesting sights to see. Um, I gather these are probably former trams, but um, sort of past their prime now. Let's see if we can see anything from the other side. Not a lot, just another train. I guess we'll reverse here and go back down. Just told the driver we made a mistake. Sorry, the glass is distorted. Still, it was a good way to see their old junk. I think that's all. That one looks alright. Snow broom.
the outer end of the line seems to be sort of central reservation. there's always buses around. This line isn't terribly long but it takes you to the uh, virtual southern border of Budapest. The inner end runs beside the Danube for a short distance. This is a view overlooking the Danube. Standing in Buda looking at Pest. Also here is the funicular. Yes, on my previous visit to Budapest, at this location, I had a nice view of a little goods tram going past, towing, towing a couple of trailers, including one with a pantograph on it. There's a new addition to the location, namely this old trailer that's been set up as a, as a beer car. You go in there and have a drink of beer. Plus it's got water laid on and a few other things. This is the new terminus for route number one. Nice scissors crossover in the foreground. This line's been extended half a dozen or so stops since I was last here in 1989 and we'll go back to the old spot. Nice way from the girl tram driver there. The line seems to be mainly set in the uh, prefabricated concrete sections with the 
special section of rail. There's another one coming towards the terminus, so we'll follow him through the scissors if he goes that way. In the background, trams 44 and 47, I think it is, go across. There's a connecting curve to the right. You might see that one go through there. There's a connecting curve to the right, but looks like it's for emergency use only. This terminus has a nice scissors crossover. This is where the line finished in 1989. Similar scene to the 1989 shot I took here. This was the last stop, but now there's not even a crossover here. It's not going to be easy to recognise this, this spot but from the 1989 video this is where the two little box motors came round the curve where the temporary deviation was where they were building the subway. Um, the subway now goes under the street you can saw the traffic going under a moment ago and that tram would have been in the zigzag right now. It's a three car set towards the city. Just as another one arrives outbound. They do get along. This is the mezzanine section of the subway that's under that intersection. I find a particularly attractive looking one. Uh, nice circular lamps in the ceiling and polished terrazzo type floor. It's only been open a few months and as you can see like everything in public transport in Budapest it's doing quite a brisk business. Some of the stations on this extension are so shallow that when you're sitting in the in the train in the station uh, you can just see the sunlight shining on the steps outside much as you can see possibly the sunlight coming down these steps here. Never had long to wait for a metro here. They seem to run at least every five minutes, probably closer to three, two to three. So I'll take this to Deactair where I change to metro number two. These tram trains are apparently automated now. They still have one person in them. So if the start man, the other ones have a conductor, a guard as well. And this also shows the electrified siding into the goods railway yard. I don't think I'm going to see anything working. It doesn't look like the tracks are used too often. Most of the 12 or 14 is on pretty wide streets segregated etc but um, this is an exception And a 12.
I think probably their performance is not unlike a Z1. Perhaps in place of performance you could read roughness. This is where the 12 and 14 part company. The 12 goes straight ahead, then goes under a bridge through a little underpass. Curves right in a moment, which you won't see. And then goes under the 14 and also the railway yards here, I think. But of more interest is one of these sidings, complete with tram wires. There's fairly extensive railway yards here. This is the number 12 terminus, which is unusual in a few ways. Instead of a scissors crossover, it's got a facing, then a trailing crossover in tandem, like they had in Winyan Tunnel. And the tram's just pulling into the stub terminus now. Double track stub, of course. And the other thing is that when it departs, you'll see it take the street in the foreground. When I was coming out here, I expected it was a balloon loop around a block, but it's not. Yeah, we waited quite a while for a tram to come, and now there's two here all of a sudden. There appears to be a signalman somewhere controlling the movements just at the back of the tram, I don't know if you saw it there's a signal, it just went back to red and when our tram was coming in earlier it waited for the other one to leave all of a sudden there's three Still waiting for his signal. Yeah, well the first one's going second. And when he's clear of the crossover, the third one will be able to get in. Looks like he let his passengers off at this point so that they wouldn't have to stop. There he goes anyway. So we had quite a busy few moments there for a while. This is the terminus of the 14 and also the 11 which is on the right there there's the 14 that just brought us out from the city nice scissors crossover, plenty of layup time and a train line.
quite ready for that one. Up in the distance there, in the track construction is the concrete slab with the rails bolted on to the top. I will have to admit though that it is quite noisy, although I suspect the major problem is lack of scrubbing. I tend to suspect that there's no scrubbers at all in Budapest. Now Ali said something about tram, old trams at the bottom and this is the entrance to a camp, camping ground and there are two trams here. More surprising though is they're complete. Um, the one on the left has got motors and controllers and the one on the right I can't see inside but it's certainly got motors and they're both standing on a short section of grooved rail so if anyone ever wanted them they'd be easily restorable that um, under the left hand one just walk up there is a controller so it's presumably been taken out of one of the trams but at least it hasn't been thrown away and uh, it's starting to rain and we're at the bottom of the chairlift we've got to get back up to the top to get to the railway so I'll have to think about this This is just uh, outside the station building at Kaleti railway station in Budapest and I saw this lovely old engine here last time I, when I was here but didn't have time to video it. It last ran in 1968. Its wheel arrangement is 1D1 and I think it must date from the 1930s according to the sign. But, um, it's good to see it preserved but be even better if it was still on the line and could be run occasionally 